Pixie. I'm Parasim. And Sen, as you may have noticed, is missing because he's a jerkass who had better things to do with his time. <laughs> and or he's been hit by a bus. We don't really know because we can't get into contact with him. I'm, I'm going to go with jerkass who's been hit by a bus. <laughs> that, that sounds perfect to me. When in doubt, take both options. Clearly. So, uh, we're going to be missing his scintillating wit and input this week, but... I, I and mean, also his Darksiders to... review, which was going to be our main feature. What a punk. <laughs> but it's not like anybody listens to the show for him, right? I mean... <laughs> of course not. Clearly, some of us are way better looking. Yes. Like you. <laughs> Those of us who have had birthdays recently, maybe. Uh, the, the joke is that I'm clearly the prettiest one here, but, you know. <laughs> also, she's had a birthday recently. Apparently they make marshmallow- they make Oreo-covered marshmallows. And then she you can dip one. them into chocolate fondue, and it is amazing. So that is what I did with my Tuesday evening, as I went to the melting pot, which is uh, up here somewhere. <laughs> Sounds like something worthy of a formal review segment. The formal review segment being that, wow, that marshmallows awesome. covered in Oreos, covered in chocolate. Fucking delicious. <laughs> uh, you're lucky we're not back on WLRA yet, or I would have <laughs> been slightly cross with you for that. The bleeping of the last episode turned out to be just as funny as I expected it to. I just peppered it with bleeps and it was pretty funny. Well, if you've opened Steam lately, you'll see that Steam Greenlight exists now. Yes. We mentioned this earlier, but is actually available to look at. I'm looking through it now, and it looks like most of the games that are vying for entry into Steam, probably not that great. But it is interesting to look at all the pictures of the games that are trying to get in. They have cool cover art. Oh, hey, The Real Texas is there. That's a pretty good game. So you've mentioned, possibly previously, on this very show. Yep. I was kind of cross when I purchased it, because I purchased it directly from the developer, which is something I like to do generally, because puts the money where it belongs. But they sent me a download code that is only valid for, like, one week. And it's like, yeah, you download this right now, and you keep track of your files, and you don't get to re-download it later. Oh. And I'm like, oh no, this is like the dark times before Steam. That's terrible. Why, yep. would, why would anyone do that? Uh, probably just because it kind of takes a lot of development work to keep track of all your users so that they, they can re-download it. I mean, the obvious way would just be to put it up as a file on a server somewhere, but then they'd be super easy to pirate because people just spread that link around. Because some people are jerks. Yep. And, and they ruin it for the rest of us. I'm optimistic that the real Texas would make it through Steam Greenlight, because it's pretty good. I might even email the developer and see if I can get a code for Steam, if it happens. That's the kind of thing that happens sometimes. Just for the sake of having that, you know, extra download if you need it? Yep. And for the sake of... I use a lot of different computers and hard drives... And keeping track of all my files is really difficult, because sometimes I'll just be in a different state. I'll be like, well, I want to play this game. And just download it over Steam. So, so Send is a filthy layabout, and we were kind of relying on him to review, what was it, Darksiders 2? Uh, Darksiders 1, yeah. Uh, Darksiders I 2 is out, but we're behind the curve. What, seriously? Yeah, Darksiders 2. No, I, I mean, like, seriously, who's going to review the first one? Yes. That's what he was playing. I was giving I, him too much credit, clearly. <laughs> clearly you were. Anyway, so we were kind of a little bit leaning on him to do this, but he's got other stuff to do, I guess, because we can't contact him. He may or may not be roadkill at this point. His phone is giving a very ominous that your phone number, your call cannot be completed as dialed message that I have not heard since the mid-90s. It's like getting the busy signal, isn't it? You kind of wonder, like, what end of the Twilight Zone you fell out of. I didn't even know phone protocols shouldn't... still had that message embedded in them. Yeah, when, when's the last time you got a busy signal? Because I can tell you. I'd say 1998. Because, you know, I still call stores and get that. Wow. 
Like, there are businesses that don't have multiple lines or call waiting. That's pretty sad. Like, guys, technology, it's pretty great. Maybe you could incorporate that into stuff. Just saying. So, well, judging by this picture on Facebook, you played some evil baby orphanage during one of your birthday parties. Did you win? <laughs> one of multiple birthday parties, yes. She had like four birthday parties. It was pretty awesome. Um, I'm not going to lie, there was some clipping while I snickered at that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yes, I played Evil Baby Orphanage. It's very hard to explain how that works, because it is kind of psychotic. Yeah, things move very fast, and it is potential. It is possible for somebody who is in the lead to be way behind after, like, a single turn. So you can only win at the beginning of your turn, and turns go around in a circle, like in most games. And so that will result in a condition where you have the 10 points you need to win for, like, a full round of the table, so I guess but we then can lose... Give like a, we can give, like, a first taste of this and explain that Evil Baby Orphanage uh, involves the players being time nannies, and you travel through time, and you kidnap evil figures from history while they're still babies so that they don't have time and opportunity to go do the things that are in the future going to make them evil and they've got different like baby like traits like some of them are grabby some of them are bullies some of them you know are just creepy and that makes them more difficult and they've got little numeric ratings that determine like they've got a little point system that determines how difficult that baby is to manage, and you've got to keep them out of trouble, basically. It's funny that creepy like is Charles one of Manson, the... for example, you have to keep away from everybody, basically. <laughs> that Manson. Can't leave him unwatched. It's funny it's that like, creepy oh, is a descriptor Gallagher. for babies. I mean, I'm not sure I've ever found a baby creepy. I don't know that they have enough agency for it. Constantly. Okay, I well, know. I guess I either find all babies creepy... To the same degree. I don't know that I've found one baby creepier than a different baby. They're like, they're all just annoying, but you're bigger than them, so if they're giving you shit, you just walk away. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it rolls around and you use like good toys to pacify your babies. And you try and grab like evil toys like the Sippy Cup of Doom to cause other players' babies to trigger their bad effects so that they misbehave and cause shenanigans. It's a little bit, yeah, it's, it's incredibly weird and difficult to explain, but once you, like, start playing, it's, like, it makes total sense. It's not that hard to pick up if you're at a uh, store the, the, and you're the, like, let's the, get this game and play it tonight. The goal of the game is that you want, like, I mentioned the difficulty ratings earlier, like, the, their mischief rating, basically. I think the highest one is four, and that only goes to like a couple of them. Yes, that one is. One of which is Baby Hitler. So that is Hitler and Rutherford B. Hayes, are the two babies with four ratings. There might be others that I can't remember at the moment, but those are the two big ones. And there's also blank cards where you can make your own. We joked about like making ones for our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, you've got these mischief ratings, and the goal is to you start your turn with at least 10 mischief points, and that's the win condition, basically. You start your turn, you've got 10 points worth of evil babies, and you're good. Those turns go by, and so much happens at once, it's like, it's kind of hard to keep up if you're not paying, like, super close attention. Because especially there's, like, anarchist babies, like Guy Fox, who'll be all like, yeah, everybody's gonna, like, toss their babies in a pile and they're gonna be randomly reassigned to everybody else. Stuff like that. It, it, it kind of gets a little crazy. But to the extent that I kind of expect that if you were, like, an expert, professional, evil baby orphanage player... There's not actually anything you could do to win more often than other yeah, people. Yeah, no, it's basically mostly chance. 
Fuck is a draw. A good game to play when drunk. I don't know. There's some math involved, and like you know, you have to mind. <laughs> you have to mind like phases. Like this is your management phase, and this is your supervision phase, or whatever. It's your action phase. So I guess if you're old hat at you know these kinds of games, sure. But good game to play when slightly buzzed and surrounded by lots of people. The fact that also it's... Uh, I've been told it's not bad to spectate either. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, that was the thing that we did. Uh, who won at your party? You know, I can't even remember, because we went... <laughs> well, everybody packed up after that, we got into the moonshine, and then we got into a round of poo, which I lost spectacularly. Heh. <laughs> got covered in it. Yep. Which is also a card game, before anybody gets any ideas. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Poo from the makers of nuts. <laughs> Konami had a press conference in Japan over this last week. They announced lots of Metal yes. Gear Solid stuff. Holy cow, yes. There's a new game called Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, and it's open world. D open world stealth action title sounds... Well, one, I'm like, you know, totally into this open world idea, so I'm, I'm super amped about it, but at the same time, I'm like, how is that going to work? Yeah, it says in this Kotaku article that it is, quote, a game without game over, which seems strange to me because, I mean, yeah, it won't have the condition where you caught out of your stealth and you lose, but what happens if somebody shoots you in the face repeatedly? Shame on you for citing a Gawker article. <laughs> You're right, I should be ashamed of that. I... I don't know that we can be friends anymore. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Apparently my offense was more serious than I realized. Nah, JK. Um, also, the new Mass Effect 3 DLC came out. If Unless we're still on this. Are we still on this? Nope. Uh, it's a well... thing. We're excited about it. There's also a movie. And the jokes. <laughs> There's already a Metal Gear Solid movie. It's called Metal Gear Solid. Well, granted, this Metal Gear Solid movie is also going to be called Metal Gear Solid. But I was referring to the game. That's a movie. There's lots of cutscenes. <laughs> you might want to rewrite that joke and then, you know, <laughs> get back to us on that. <laughs> the other thing is that Ground Zeroes joins Revengeance in the list of Metal Gear Solid games that have really stupid sounding titles. Revengeance. Ground Zeroes. Mass Effect DLC? Anyway, yeah. Um, Mass Effect Leviathan came out. So, it's kind of weird. I don't, I, I'm gonna have to buy it and play it, obviously, before I can come out with anything more definitive on this. But because it's so late in the game's life, everybody's all like, oh, we've already finished now. Um, this one takes place underwater? Yes. It's some, like, mythological tech that you need to go look for or something. I don't remember. Um, right, so you're looking for... This Leviathan. Oh, right, it's a super weapon, of course, that's going to be, of course, vital to the war effort. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, even though, you know, your war effort's basically already completed at this point, so it's totally not. But <laughs> if you want to go run around in an underwater level and shoot some stuff and get into a mech suit, then I guess that's your thing. Somehow the idea of underwater locations holds much less sway for me in universes where space travel is possible. Because it's like, why do I care about water? I'll just fly my spaceship down there. It's the joke about Warhammer 40Ks that they call their space marines space marines. It's like, once it's the year 40,000, aren't all marines space marines? What, what use do you really have for water marines? But Mass Effect is amazingly fun, and its multiplayer is worth coming back to, so that's... 
enough to get me to start We're up the game to play the for, DLC. You know, the people who never left. Yep. Because got to acknowledge that they exist. Um, I haven't had a chance to play in forever because Sen basically is never online, and he's the only one I usually played with. But hopefully that'll change soon. Yeah. Still have an active Xbox Live Gold subscription? I think so. It's hard to tell. I can't really remember much right now. It's I less expensive than most Xbox things. I haven't turned my Xbox on in so long. Yeah. You have a new computer, so you've been a little bit distracted from it. Yeah, I've been a little bit sidetracked with, holy cow, I'm like, get in on this PC gaming nonsense now. What manner of shenanigans are these? Just the other day, Connect got a $40 price drop, putting it at $109, which Shoot, I have I written have down as one. still really expensive, but way cheaper than before. Oh, that, that I don't is... know. That, that, that is pretty tempting at that, at that price point. Yeah, $40 off is never bad for just about anything. Much more appealing I, at $109 than I 150 might do that. I know Sen used to have one, and then we had that one party where we used it, and that was basically it. He basically was too embarrassed, I guess, to use it on his own. I can see that. Social context. I can imagine Sen being embarrassed in that fashion. Whereas, you know, me, I'll take any chance to dance around my room in my underwear that I can get, so... Absolutely. If you do get a connect, you might have... A couple of good things to play because Reketeer was just in the Summer of Arcade, and that's a Connect game that seems to be Reseteer? pretty popular. Uh, Reketeer. It is actually, mm. I imagine it's a pun on Resetatir in some way because the names are very similar. But it is. No, I'm thinking Resetir like that little like item shop dungeon crawler sim thing. Yeah, the carpet folder game. Ago was fairly popular. Yeah, they're not related in any way, but the developers of Wreck, as in a car wreck, at here, have to have known that people are going to be confusing the two games. It's, you you that destroy like things like in Wreck here. to happen. Yeah, possibly. Whatever, yes, nerds know. don't communicate verbally. Our confusion and all that. Nerds live on the internet and only use text to communicate. No confusion. And not like that just happened right now. <laughs> Correct. On a podcast I with nerd I title. deny that the past five minutes exist. <laughs> Prove me wrong. You have no evidence. It's definitely not recorded. Also burden of proof. Jeez, <laughs> you are you are dropping the ball all over the place today. <laughs> yeah, I'm a failure. Let's see. In other news that I got from Gawker sites. Oh wait, just kidding. There will be another Double Fine Happy Action Theater game, which is allegedly the funnest thing for Connect. I don't know if the second one is out yet, but I think it's going to be out soon. But both Double Fine Happy Action Theaters are apparently worth getting if you get a Connect. I think Double Fine does some cool stuff. I could see that. Yeah. In preparation for the release of Borderlands 2, Gearbox has released a free Flash game that plays like 2D shooters from the NES in a long, long time ago, but full of Borderlands references. It is called The Space Border Space Lands, and it can be played at wubwub.eu. <laughs> if you... I don't even know where to begin with that story. It is... I played about ten minutes of it. It plays just like Smash TV. And it is full of all the Borderland references you'll need to be amused if you played Borderlands. You kill Skags and Psychos and there's chests that have guns in them. And you're like, yeah, I know what that chest looks like. It looks like the chests from Borderlands. It has clap traps. Good for five minutes of amusement. If you have a browser to play it in. Wubwub.eu See, the OnLive CEO left OnLive, and it seems like OnLive 
as a whole is probably not going to exist soon. It's all messy. I'm not especially sad about this because, honestly, I don't think on live ever could have worked out to be a good experience. I think latency would always be too big of a problem. If you hit jump and Batman does not jump for almost a full second, that's not that's never going to be fun. So if you bought an on live console, you're out ninety bucks. It's the the service isn't cancelled yet, but it's probably going to be. Guild Wars Two is out tomorrow, and it looks so. Like... By the time this podcast comes out, then. Yep, most likely. It is looking more like an MMO than Guild Wars One did, but there's no subscription fee. I'm almost tempted to pick it up, just because. It will have the opportunity to walk around in a big world and hit one, two, three, four to kill some mobs with while hanging out with cool kids over Skype without having to pay a subscription fee. Yay! Woo! Well, I guess the Old Republic probably satisfies that need for us. Has it gone free-to-play yet? I think it was this fall that that was going to happen, and since it's technically not fall yet, I don't think so. Yeah, your and I subscriptions expired this... Like two days ago. Yeah, very recently. On my birthday. Ha, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not nice, I guess, but what a coincidence. <laughs> Happy birthday, you don't get to play this game anymore, not that you've played it in a few weeks. Yeah, I've been busy with other stuff. Yep. Sometimes life makes you busy. Super busy. And, yes, I have, I've, I played a little bit of Call of Duty 4 over the weekend, or over the past week, and, oh, it seems like it has a story, which is kind of interesting, but it's like a modern military story, which I don't care much about. Uh, one gameplay comment I have to make is that right-click, which puts you in aim mode in just about all games and Call of Duty, is not a hold thing, but it's a toggle. You right-click to go into aim mode, and you right-click to go out of aim mode. And that was making the game very hard to play for me, because I've been playing games where it's you hold right-click when you want to aim. I may play a little more of that, maybe not. I also finished Arkham City, and I'm convinced that Rocksteady needs to make a dedicated Catwoman game. I've been saying that for ages. That would be pretty fun. I was looking on the internet to try and figure out what Rocksteady's current project is, and I was not able to find anything. Rocksteady has no announced games. It's On one hand, it seems like they might keep making Batman games, but they finished Arkham City in a fairly definitive way. They should make a Catwoman game. Other new releases, uh, They Bleed Pixels is a retro graphics 2D platformer kind of score racer with very violent but pixelated scenes in it. I think you play as a as potentially a Cthulhu quote spoken that way, or maybe if they're a little more serious as just a Lovecraftian elder god, but you have tentacles, claw hands. You use it to stab people. You collect liters of blood as your measure of score. There is a new episode of the Telltale Walking Dead game. You can play if you have that season pass. And there's going to be a iPhone slash Android game that is a full Final Fantasy game called Final Fantasy Dimensions. It's kind of got uh, SNES-style graphics. It looks like a, a very old Final Fantasy game, but done mobile. A new story. New, new everything. That may be interesting. Hope it's cheap. 
I might be... I might try that out if it is very cheap. Well, one of the problems with JRPG combat is that it kind of just takes a long time. But mobile games are different from desktop games for me, in that in desktop games, I want the good parts as fast and frequently as possible. But if I'm actually on my phone playing a game, then maybe I kind of just do want you to waste as much of my time as possible. Because it's probably like, well, I have an obligation in half an hour, but I have, I have nothing else to do for that half hour, so I need to waste some time. Maybe the genre and the platform are appropriate for each other. Yeah, I could see that. I'm trying to spend my newly acquired riot points on League of Legends, since I got those. Have you had any success with that? I've, I've actually managed to get the thing to work, except now I'm sad that uh, Arcade Zona skin is no longer available. Ah, that's so, a shame. So I'm going to use it to buy some different skins instead. And I think, on that note, Pixie and I are going to go play some League. Does sound like a good time. Ooh. All right, in the meantime, I'm Pixie. And I'm Parasim. And the cat is rubbing itself on the microphone. I apologize for that. The cat has a pattern like a dick on its face. We'll catch you next week on Nerd Talk. (laughs) 